What's going on, people? Welcome to another edition of Every Man is a Millionaire. Today, we're going to talk about the massive dangers of a scarcity mindset. That's right. A scarcity mindset can keep you broke. It can keep you out of relationships. It can make sure that you grow old to be alone, despondent, and poor. Yes, a scarcity mindset can do all of that and much, much more. Be sure to stay to the end. I got some special stuff that I'm going to talk about. If this is your first time here, I'm Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we work on developing wealth through entrepreneurship. That's what we do. So if you want to start a business, you want to enhance your hustle, you're in the right place. So let's get into this tawdry situation. It's so distasteful. Part of what happened, one of the resale people came onto my YouTube channel. Now, if you notice, I don't do resale anymore. I haven't done resale in five or six years. I made that announcement. But for some reason, some of them still kind of roll over or crawl over this way. And the person was like, if you have so much money, why are you asking for more money? And I, I, I was just blown away. Does anyone say, hey, Apple, you got billions, stop making money? Does anyone say, uh, GM, you got billions, BMW, you got billions, uh, Kroger, Publix, you got billions, stop making money? No one ever says this, but for individuals, this is one of these things that I got to do a deep dive into. Because, first of all, I felt very, very sorry for the person who made that statement. This person has a scarcity mindset. Uh, some people, like give you give you the uh, the deal. I have two vehicles, and someone's like, "Why do you have two vehicles? Why not?" It's not big things that represent the scarcity mindset. It's little stuff like, "Well, you shouldn't have two cars," um, or this refusing to put a number on how much money you want to make. That is a big, big sign of a scarcity mindset. If you say things like, I just want to make enough to be secure. I just want enough to be okay. No numbers, no numbers, no accountability, no accountability. You really don't have to do anything. See, when you start putting numbers on stuff, when you start um, defining your success, when you start to really look at what it takes to be successful when you start to become relevant when you start to become hungry when you start to reach out when you start to become more than what you were the day before this creates some problems for some people some serious problems for some people because they're living this scarcity mindset but let's talk about the the reseller people. Uh, many of them have a scarcity mindset because for someone else to win, someone must lose. It's a zero sum game for them when really it is not. It can be many, many win-win situations. But if you look at how these people were brought up, if you look at your own background, if you will look at things that you did, then it becomes evident with the scarcity mindset. It becomes very evident with the scarcity mindset. So we know what the scarcity mindset is. Not believing in yourself, not thinking there's enough, uh, thinking everything's super competitive, competing with folks you don't need to be competing with. This is a scarcity mindset. Uh, I'll, I'll even talk about um, Russell Wilson a little bit here. If Do me a favor. Do me a solid. Go over to the latest edition of Sports Illustrated and read that article about the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Pete Carroll made a decision, trade off the Legion of Boom for Russell, and we see how that's working out. But how does one get rid of the scarcity mindset? Number one, you have to stop being a hater. You can never, ever hate. Uh, I don't, well, I don't have anything. I don't have, a, I only got one screen set up, but... You can't be a hater. You can't hate on anybody. You can have a discussion about somebody. You could talk about a, an issue, but you can't be a hater. And what is a hater? 
A hater is, I don't care how much factual evidence there is, they're going to find some way to marginalize, malign the person simply because they don't like them. Just that's it. You, you can't be a hater because see, th this is what happens. You activate your subconscious mind. So when you vigorously hate on wealthy people, good looking people, skinny people, people who have more stuff than you do, your subconscious mind is going to go like, huh, that's bad. We don't want any bad stuff here. And your subconscious mind is going to ensure that you don't get those things. It's going to ensure that you never, ever become successful enough to have those things. Even though your conscious mind is like, yes, I want this. I want this. I want the house. I want the car. I want the money. I want the success. I want the fame. Yes, 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 yes. But your subconscious mind see you hating. I'll give you an example. Look at the number of stars, not just rappers, but stars, movie stars, um, musicians who were haters. A lot of them committed suicide. A lot of them are broken poor right now. They had literally the world by the tail. But they let their hate dictate their reality. Don't let your assumptions and your suppositions dictate your reality. Don't let your assumptions dictate your reality because see, some people assume something to be true when it's not true. And then they make it a reality because they, they focus on it. They keep thinking about it. So you can't be a hater. Uh, number two thing that you need to do to be the living in abundance mindset, you need to be thankful for everything. You need to be thankful. Like if someone super chats me five bucks, I'm like, thank you. Be thankful for everything. Not just the small stuff, not just the big stuff, but everything. You have to be grateful. You have to have some gratitude because what will happen is you will train yourself to only become happy when big stuff happens. And as we know, big stuff doesn't happen every day. Big stuff isn't a norm. So you're going to spend the majority of your time unhappy, hating on people because you're unhappy. Thus, creating an environment in your subconscious mind that is going to get worse and worse as the days go by. So be grateful. Don't be a hater. Be grateful. The third thing you need to do, you need to get busy and this is very very hard first of most first of all you must work in the mode of delayed gratification which is hard for most people because in our school systems we don't teach people about money we don't teach people about how to operate a business we teach them a lot of stuff that really doesn't impact their lives so it's not your fault that you don't know this but if you want to start a business, you're going to have to be busy. You're going to have to be productive. You're going to have to put in time. You're going to have to put in work. You're going to have to put in effort before you get paid. Before you get paid. This is what you got to do. And many people are not willing to put in that effort. Some people feel because they worked very hard for a month, maybe six months, maybe a year that, you know, I need something. I've worked hard for a year. I need some money. I need some results for my actions. And depending upon your business model, those results may not be there. And you'll give up when you're so close to greatness. Because when I started this channel nine plus years ago, you know, I was so happy to start this channel because I had this blog, right? It's no longer exists. It was urbanpackrat.com. And I worked and I wrote articles and I didn't get any traffic, no traffic, maybe 10, 20 hits a day. Then I came to YouTube, started posting videos, put the link to my blog there. I started getting two, 300 hits a day. Then it went up to 500 hits. Then it went up to 1,000 hits. Then it went up to 10,000 hits. Then it went up to 50,000 hits the first not the first month, but within a few months. And check this out. I still hadn't made any money. 
I was about five months in working eight, 12 hours a day, blogging, doing the YouTube channel. Still no money came in, but I was happy because my currency at that time was results. I was moving in the right direction. I went from 10 to 20 hits a day to 500 hits a day in like 30 days. I was elated. I said, okay, we're, we're, we're going in the right direction. We're, we're getting there, all right? Then that first, I think it took me about 90 days to get to 50,000 hits that month. And I said, okay, we're about ready. Then I released my book. Then the money started to come in as a trickle. It was no flood. It was a trickle. But once again, I was happy. I wrote a book. People were buying it. People were getting benefits. And I think my first week or two weeks, I made like six, 700 bucks. But I was happy because... I was moving in the right direction. Then that first year, month after month, I made more and more money. And of the 62 grand, I made most of that the last six or seven months. Because it jumped up, then it kind of leveled off. Then the shows came on, then it just pew. And many of people were like, hey, Glendon, you got lucky. To some degree, I did. Not. And I'm going to tell you why I did not get lucky. Was it luck that created these YouTube videos? Was it luck that created the blog? Was it luck that had me out there on the storage auction trail year after year? Was it luck of doing Amazon at a high level? Was it luck doing uh, eBay? At a high it wasn't luck. That was action. That was activity. That was hustle. It wasn't luck. See, luck is something that people who don't want to work, don't know how to work, or just a, ha just a hater, that's what they're going to say because they don't want to accept the fact that you got on this path of greatness. Because, see, many people, like, you look at the house, you look at the cars and all this other stuff. Those are the results of success. Notice I said results of success. You're a success when you're working in the dark. You're a success when you're working 12 hours a day for no money. This is how you develop the abundance mindset because you got to have this faith that one day it's going to break loose. Now, to my benefit, I've experienced this a few times. I experienced it with the storage auction business. I experienced it, experienced it with the office furniture business. So I had the confidence to know that if I kept hitting it, 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 it would break free. I didn't expect it to break free like it did. So it wasn't luck. So if you working putting out efforts putting out blogs putting out youtube videos then one day it takes off person who tells you that you got lucky you look him in the eye and you say no i didn't get lucky you hope to get lucky that's why you're not taking action right now because you're hoping to get lucky say i didn't get lucky i worked on this for years and just walk away because these people just like this um, person who came from the resale side. You know I was supposed to fail. You know I was supposed to disappear. How many of you guys are here from the old resale days? Just a, just a curiosity. Because there are many people who thought that I would disappear. For those of you who have been here for about six, seven years, how many of the original resale video makers are still around? Tell me, I don't know. I don't watch those videos. It's not my business anymore. I don't do that. See, this is another thing about the abundance mindset. You need to find your happy. You need to find your happy. You don't need to find an audience. You don't need to find a product. You need to find your happy. I almost died. And if any of you've ever had this experience, you know what I'm talking about. And for those of you who have not, and I don't wish this on you because it's not fun. Things become very clear. And I made the, pro the proclamation that I wasn't going to do anything that I didn't find fun. I, didn't, I wasn't going to do anything that didn't make me happy. I've lost opportunity. I've lost money. Don't care. Didn't make me happy. Didn't tickle my fancy. And I did this when I didn't have a lot of money. I had money saved up in the bank. I had a lot of money in the bank. 
but I wasn't making active income. And I made this decision. And that's why I've been able to be here nine plus years. Because this makes me happy doing these live streams, putting out this content, creating these courses. This stuff makes me happy. This is like, this is fun. So when you're looking for that thing you need to do to make money, now let's, let's understand this. There's your business model and there's your hustle. There's your business model and there's your hustle. There's two different things. Your hustle can be something you don't like because you need money. I know you need money. But whatever you're going to make as your long-term business model, you need, it needs to make you happy. Not so much a passion. Because many people have a passion for surfing. But if you had to, they had to make surfboards, they would become disgruntled immediately because that's work. Happy is my currency. Happy should be your currency. Because once you get happy, then the abundance mindset just starts to pop out. You, you start to meet people. Because, see, there's not, there's, there's not a lot of people who are happy. There are many people who are upset. There are many people who are dysfunctional. There are many people who are sad. So if you, by becoming that ray of abundance, that ray of light, that ray of everything, like, this is funny. I had to drop off one of my cars to have it service, right? And I was going to call Uber. Well, I pull in. And a shout out to Jay Carter the Third. He's dropping off someone at the service center, right? And I was like, he, and then he kind of creeps up on me, right? And I let down the window, and he's like, Glendon Cameron. I was like, oh, how's this gonna go? You never know, man. When people recognize you on the street, you never know. But it went really well, and um, he took me um, home, and we had a nice little conversation. So I appreciate you. But he said something. He said, you know. I put it in my mind that I was going to meet you one day. That's the abundance mindset. That's the abundance mindset. Not hanging out with losers. And see, we're going to talk about the losers because losers are people who have given up on life. They've given up all hope. They've given up everything because it's hard. Making money is hard. I know you have people here on the internet saying, like acting like you know 100 G's in a month is just everywhere. But I've shown you guys the stats. I've shown you how much money people really make. I've shown you literally in the world, we're talking about a million people out of 7.5 billion people with a net worth of greater than 5 million. 1 million people out of 7.5 billion. Most of the millionaires are in that 9.9% with a great deal of their wealth as part of a paid off house. That's a great deal of their wealth. And then when you get to five, game changes. They ain't house. That's usually a business, stocks, bonds, assets. But you can do it if you develop the patience. If you find you're happy. Because I'm going to tell you something. If it don't make you happy, you're not going to do it for long. Or if you do it for long, you're going to go crazy. You may become dependent upon pharmaceuticals to get you through the day because, yeah, you're making that money, but you don't like what you're doing. So find your happy. Find something you like because I like talking to you guys. I like training you guys. And it's a, a wonderful life. So you should work toward a wonderful life and you should because, see, once you get past the hating, it gets easier. But there are some people who are just full of hate. And I think that's the reason that this uh, misguided soul came here, because it was all in caps. And, and I, I had the presence of mind, the emotional intelligence, to realize that wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't about me. It had nothing to do with me. That person is probably having a bad time in life. That person is probably suffering financially. Then you see me here, year after year, growing, living in abundance, getting a little better each year. He was supposed to be a scam artist. He's supposed to be gone. He's supposed to be in jail. He's making more money than ever. I hate him. And as long as he hates me or she, I don't know who it was, then um, they're going to continue to be poor. They're going to continue to struggle because this is the thing. The principles of success transcend race, 
transcends religion. Essentially, you find you're happy, you find your audience, you create your service, your product, you make money. And I like the way that I make money. Because uh, back to Jay Carter, the third, he was just saying that the disruptive male really helped him because he's a year out of a divorce. And he said, everything you said, man, it's just like we were cool. Then all of a sudden she just turned into this other person. I'll tell you my experiences for a reason. Uh, mostly a lot of us, and this is more about abundance. This is about living in abundance. Because I have made a decision a long time ago. Uh, the things that happened, the L's I took, I was like, somebody can benefit from that. Somebody could use that information. So that's what I do. And I get all of these wonderful emails of like, oh man, you know, I ain't where I want to be, but I'm much further ahead than I used to be. And see, that that's the key. I want you guys to listen to me. You're not going to take it all in one fell swoop. Like, let's say you're the quarterback. It's fourth quarter. You got five minutes. You're at your 10-yard line. You just got to run three successful plays, four if you need it, consistently. 10 yards is all you got. Oh, 10, 11 yards is all you got to get. You get two on this one, you get five on this one, you get eight on this one. You consistently do that. Look at the short yardage play. I mean, the long bomb is exciting. But if you look at the most consistent, the most prolific teams, they have a ton of successful short yardage plays. That's the system. Little steps, progression, keep moving, living your abundance. And you can have some money. You can have the life you want. You can have everything that you want. But you got to be patient. And you have to be real with yourself. Because um, I see this all the time. And I got a question. Why isn't anyone saying, Apple, you made, you made enough money. Now you need to shut down your business and just help people. The reason that people go after more money. If you're not getting money, you're losing money. If you're not getting money, you're losing money. And how are you losing money? Inflation, taxes, those are two ways. Competition, that's a third way. So even if you made $10 million cash, if you don't put that money in a productive funnel or productive place, it's going to become less valuable each day. Now, 2000, 1991, I got out of the military. I was working in the Northside Hospital. You know, I was making 10 bucks an hour. Then I moved up to like 1250. Then I took the certification. Then I moved up to $22. So when I left, I was probably making $23, $24. I did that in a year because I was in, I was a 92 Bravo in the military, right? And back then there was Hue and all these other tests you can take to become a medical technologist. You know how hard it is for someone to double their income in a year in today's economy with a job. To his credit, Northside, like I got like a dollar raise for just showing up on time. Um, first first 60 days and then didn't miss a day. was never late. Bam, dollar. <laughs> they don't do stuff like that anymore, man. They don't do it. It's just crazy. But this is why people who have money get more money. And then it gets to a point where it ain't even about the money. It's about that game. It's about how much can I do? How much can I build? Because once you get past, let's say, six, eight million, you, you, you have the house. You, you have the car. More than likely, the house is paid off. Because one of the things that I've noticed is people who have these kind of houses don't lose these kind of houses because they have such economic surplus that when times get bad, they have money there to handle this. There are people in this neighborhood who've become sick. There's people in this neighborhood who've had tragic things happen, but because they had so much surplus, 
They didn't lose the house. They didn't lose the car. I'm telling you, uh, I'm going to do a video just rolling around with maybe two or three miles of this house. It'll blow your mind. All right, but that's it. You know, you got to stop the hating because it's very distasteful. It's very, very, very distasteful. So hopefully y'all had a good weekend. Let's see. Cool. I'm just going to stroll through the comments because I, I do have an announcement. And I'm going to get into it. Well, maybe I'm going to have to just read these comments. Good Lord. Y'all got some good stuff up in here. Michael Hubbard, the original innovator of game. What do you mean you survived this weekend, Charlatan? What's up, Richard Caston? Since the rally, no one ever complains about more formal education, more friends, more spirituality, but for resources and wealth, people complain. I never thought of it like that, but that that is um, very on point. What's up, Edward Coke? Tim A, money is not important. Something always here. <laughs> yeah, it's right up there with oxygen. What's up, brother Gary times three or three X top of the morning. Richard Mayfield, Johnny. What's up, Derek? It shouldn't. Uh, I actually tried to change that. That's funny. I think that's an excellent idea, Christian Amerson. Well, what's up, Walter? A. Wells Street, lucky or smart, read the book. Hmm, that's interesting. I never even heard of that book. Thank you, Diana's Orchard. <laughs> the anti Marxist is back. 285 property, preparation plus opportunity, success. Luck, good day, folks. What's up, John Smith? The ant most have transitioned. See, this is something else, and this this is for you, the Marxist. What is the problem with people making money if they deliver? Answer that question, because you and other people just seem to hate the fact that. Because I'm going to tell you something. This iteration of people making money online, this is really the first edition, so to speak, and it's going to be crazy. Online education. It's going to be a multi-trillion dollar business. Uh, Kubri, some people confuse timing with luck. Zola resale days. Meant to Shelley, actions speak louder than whining and complaining. And that, that's one of the key things that I want to get across. You, you got to be busy. You got to be active. I see profits. I'm still in resale days and I'm killing it. Woo -woo. Love every day of it. It's a grind, but a grind I love. Awesome. Oh, okay. Abdul. Abdul's going through some many transitions. He he got sick. He had a personal situation. But I think he's coming back. Oh, okay. A lot of folks came from Abdul. What's up, O'Shea? Christian, what makes me happy is teaching people about fitness. What pisses me off is people is preaching the market is so saturated. I, 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 it's a lot of people, but I don't think it's saturated. I agree with you. Uh, Von B. O'Shea and I've done two shows together and going to do a third. So what you talking about? You, you need to get into those archives. All right. Mr. Prunella, but rich people hate on other pe rich people as well. You know, if in the rich, in the, in the Sports Illustrated article, it talks about Richard Sherman hating on Russell Wilson. So if you got the same kind of money, is it really hate and jealousy or is it just a difference of opinion? Because that's kind of like a loser thought because it's like, um, now nah, I'm not going to use that example, but I will say if you're going to do, you know what? 
here we're going. This is how we're going to handle this, uh, Mr. Pushner. So if you think being low class and doing the same thing that someone else is doing it because they do it, that's really a loser mentality. It's like, well, they did it. I'm going to do it, too. Just think about that. And from where I stand, I've seen way more poor people hating on rich people. You know why? There's more of them. Charlton had to replace AC heater, washing machine, TV all this weekend. Good Lord, man. You hustling hard. Then the orchard profit is your energy of abundance. Yes, it is. All right. Apparently you did, man. I've been on O'Shea's channel like twice. We're going to do another one. It's going to be a hot topic. Mo Grizzly, if you're not getting money, you're losing money. Amen to Pastor G in the Church of Abundance. Because this is the thing. Once you get into this abundance thing, and let's talk about disrupted mail. Once you get the abundance mindset, let's say you go out and two chicks reject you. And you're like, respectfully like, okay, you don't like me, fine. And then you just keep asking women out. More going to say yes unless you're a Quasimoto or somebody like that than those who will say no, especially today. <laughs> Cash flow and surplus is a king. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of the older people who don't have uh, active form of income move out of these big houses because property taxes around here are um, 9000 up to about 50k every year jp what's up johnny no you can't get it in one day you just came in one man's way 70k is the new broke is the yeah it's most everyone's goal that they goal to break even but do the math and it's the new practical poverty because of taxes i know someone who makes 80k a year and pays Let's see, $22,000 a year in taxes and does not get a refund. Bruce Leroy. I don't know, the anti-Marxist. You, you seem to have some very socialist ways. I don't know. All right. Hold on. 285 property, first in, down, Mark Ingram, Trent Richardson, second down, TJ Yeldon, King and Drake, third down, Eddie Lacey, there. <laughs> Alabama has a machine. They, they just got a machine. Every year I think it's going to be a rebuilding year, and no, it's not. What's up, Lee Production? Awesome, JP. All right. Johnny Turbo, rich on rich hate is different. It's not the poor mind of hate that these hate because they can't master the effort to produce. I know, man. Hey, Wells, we went to South Beach for Labor Day. It wasn't very busy. They were giving away free drinks and a lot of shops closed. Something to think about. Here's part of something that's not part of the abundance mindset. We have a very strange economy. Uh, we have, let's say the top 10% will do well, will live the American dream. And the other 90%, depending on how far or are they on the top of the ladder, because this one's going to be different. Because you're going to have people who are going to be making a lot of money, and you're going to have people who are living in abject poverty. Steve James, what I don't like is people think you're hating just because you may not agree with them. Uh, I'm going to talk to to this point, Steve Jameson. When I have someone who disagrees with me, 95% of the time it, turn, it turns into a name-calling contest, and I don't start the name-calling. So typically, based upon how someone disagrees, it is usually formed and rooted in hate, scarcity, and jealousy, usually. Uh, there's some people in my group who disagree with me, but they can disagree with me 
in a very intellectual way and it doesn't resort to name calling because I would say nine out of 10 people who disagree with me on this channel, it will turn into a hate fest zero to 60. So I, I would really disagree with you. I think mature people can have a disagreement in the way they do it. But from what I've seen, like uh, this reseller, something, something, POS, some, and just screaming. They ain't a disagreement. That's a hater. And most people who disagree hate. I would say there's some, but usually it's some hate coming. Uh, Johnny Turbo paying 5,500 in property taxes here, middle income area in Ontario. Even with combined income of 160K pre-tax, it hurts. Because that the taxes, I mean, the taxes are going to take 40 to 50K of that. Yes, Paul Hudson, the hustle is real. Now, Johnny Turbo can't imagine paying 10K a year. Okay, let's, let's take that. I want you to reframe that. I want you, and that's going to sound crazy. I can't wait to tell you. 10, 20, 30 grand a year in property taxes. I'm looking forward to it. Now, I know that sounds crazy, right? But if you're paying 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars a year in property taxes, that means you have a large house, which also means that you're making a lot of money. See how that works? Because uh, once you get into the game, you're going to learn not to say stuff like that because that gets into your, your, your subconscious mind. Uh, one man's way. So which class is better to sell to the richer or the needy? Both. Let me give you an example. Ralph Lauren, purple label. They sell to the high end clients. Chaps, they sell to the low end. Polo, they sell to the middle market. See, it ain't like you have to do one or the other. You can always do both or triple. See, see how that works. Ralph Lauren, purple label. If you don't know what that is, that's their exclusive brand. I got a leather jacket because I bought a unit that had about six of them in there, and I kept the brown one. But I sold those jackets for 600 bucks on eBay years and years ago. Uh, purple label, they may be 250 300 bucks for a silk shirt. You go to Chaps, you find that in Marshalls. Ralph Lauren sells to the middle, low-end market, middle market, and the high-end market. Diana Orchard's toxicity comes in veal forms. Think before you speak. Oh, man, I love that, Diana, because that's typically what happens here. Cody, you ain't never lied. Johnny Turbo, your method of disagreement speaks to your maturity, which comes from success. You have to be able to disagree and find middle group to be successful in business. Pretty much because, well, let's just, uh, I'm not even going to bring that up. But I was having some discussions with some people that were rooted in facts, rooted in facts. It was about this night thing. And remember, I did the video here and then it later came out that after they did that night sales surged 31 percent. But once again, there are some people like Kiki rooted in their feelings. Oh, Nike's going to lose half their business. Uh, that's an uneducated person. Nike gets 53 percent of its profits outside of North America. So they can't lose half, even if all of North America said, you know, Nike, we're not riding with you anymore. Still ain't losing half their business. But once again, you have many people who have a false sense of importance when it comes to these things, like the folks who are burning their shoes while wearing them. That should tell you how smart these people are. You're going to set your shoes on fire while you're wearing them. <laughs> Woo. Save, invest, repeat. I find most people would rather watch a successful person succeed rather than going out and applying the techniques and succeeding themselves. Uh, I have wondered about that too because you notice how like people like to watch people play video games versus playing them themselves. It, it, it's kind of interesting how that goes. Definitely limiting beliefs. I know cool breeze. Uh, Loft PH, yes. Ye St. Laurent for high end and Laurel for drugstore buyers. There you go. See, this this is once again the abundance mindset. 
I want you to really think about this. I'm like, this house, right? I did not think, how am I going to get this house? Uh, what money am I going to move around? I was like, you know what? I'm going to create some new source of income just for this house. That's what the abundance mindset thinking will do for you. You will not be trying to cram your life into your money. You will try to expand your money for your life. That's the abundance mindset. And it, it now I will say I used to be a loser. I will say I possessed the loser mindset, the scarcity mindset. And that's how I know what it is when I see it. So you got to talk to yourself in an affirmative. And the thing is, it's not going to work overnight. That's that's another thing. Uh, I got Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field, Power of Subconscious Mind. And it took months for that stuff to work because I was pre or pre indoctrinated with loser speak, a loser narrative. I used to think really bad. I used to say my, my self talk was horrible. And once again, to some of you with these jacked up avatars, that's what you think of yourself on the subconscious level. Stop it. Oh, man, I like that. Uh, excuses and limited beliefs are like hurdles on the track. Since rally taxes is just a bill you have to pay to, pay to play the game. Because the thing is, I want you to really, really think about this. You got somebody. Well, let's talk about child support. You got people who will, men, who will not make as much money as they can because they want to avoid paying high child support. Typically, when a man in his 30s, 40s, and 50s, these are his best income years. And this is also the same time that many men get divorced and have to pay child support. So you're screwing over some of your best years in order not to pay child support. The long range impact on that is going to be ridiculously bad for you. Oh, their stock came back up one man's way. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go down long. I hope you bought some. Thank you, Venturous One. Awesome. Um, I'm going to say any polls that you see will probably be from Fox News. And any survey, anything they have, or what is this new one? CRTX on Facebook. Here's the thing. And this is an abundance mindset notion. There are 339 million people in the United States. Right? 53 million voted for Trump. Right? Which means 280 something did. Let me say that again. 53. Because this, this is the same demographic who's going bananas over this Kaepernick thing. This is but there ain't that many of y'all compared to the whole. So, you know, and I can tell you all day, I can show you numbers, I can draw graphs, and y'all still ain't going to believe it because you don't want to believe it. Neil Floyd, I have a client who's an author and knows a lot of people who need help doing books and ebooks and getting their products approved for and for ingram uh no uh, i can't because i've never done that so that's it for today now let's get into the discussion and some of y'all gonna love this um tomorrow is a webinar should let you know if you're in hustle undergrad so tomorrow's gonna be the webinar and probably thursday was gonna be the q a also, I'm going to bless y'all with some game. I'm getting ready to do something similar with Disruptive Mail. So everyone who is in Hustler Undergrad will get the new Disruptive Mail program. Because I know a lot of y'all want that. And there's a few women who signed up for Undergrad, but I'm going to let y'all have it too. So that's the new thing. Uh, the new program probably is going to be, because it's going to be monthly. Because I get a lot of people who are like, hey, you know, can we do consults? And simply put, I, I don't have the time to do consults. But I do have the time to do group training and live sessions. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to, I'll put it together, but just to give you guys who are in Hustlers undergrad a heads up, this will be a new thing that will be coming to you. 
Uh, you don't have to do anything. Uh, I've got to upgrade my search for an assistant. I'm probably going to get a personal assistant because they're going to be doing a lot of stuff. And we're going to rock and roll because that's where I'm going to do the mindset training. That's where I'm going to do the masculinity training and the stuff because Hustler Undergrad will be purely business and stuff like that and sales and marketing foundational stuff for your LLCs holding company and then disruptive mail we're going to get into the mindset we're going to get into the game so everyone that's signed up you're going to get that and it's probably going to be because I'm going to put it together later because I'm going to do a stream tonight on disruptive mail announcing the program so you're going to love it you're going to love it trust me uh, just talking to Jay Carter the third he said the channel has just really, really helped him. So we're going to do more of that. All right. Well, there's Cody. All right. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Lance Brown. Can you use the nightcap story as a stupid test for people you might work with in building a business? I don't, I don't understand the context of that. seeing by the end of the day people care more about the quality of the product they buy if night keeps up the high quality they will keep winning not necessarily mike has done a fantastic job of branding itself you know the difference between a pair of nikes and a pair of those off-brand shoes not much some of them are often made in the same factories that make the nikes yeah because it's tilted Venus one will you be doing the hustler undergrad again next year oh no the hustler undergrad is a perpetual program right now we're doing live classes to this is why you know with the holding companies the ones that got messed up and all that, I gotta redo them um, this is going to be an ongoing thing so yeah all right so just that little announcement plus some other stuff all right you guys have a productive Monday because I am I got a lot of stuff to do. So do me this solid. Go below and get on the live stream notification list. Don't even worry about subscribing. Just get on that list. I'll explain that when I crank up uh, the Digital Citizen channel. Because now I moved. That was crazy. It was really crazy. I didn't know how much. Because, you know, oh, I'll, I'll explain the move. Had to move stuff out of my office. Had to move stuff out of the top part of the house. And had to hire some movers to move the gym equipment. And I'm grateful because I didn't have all this two years ago. And all of it makes sense. So I'll be doing some more stuff. All right. Once again, go below, get on the text notification list. First link below. And I will talk to you guys later.